You know, one of the fun aspects of growing carnivorous plants is being able to manually feed them. One of the simplest types of carnivorous plants that you can feed are sundews. In this video, I'm gonna be briefly explaining what sundews are and how they go about capturing their own prey and why they are so easy to feed. I'm also gonna be explaining how I go about feeding my plants and also explaining why you would even consider manually feeding your plants, even though they're very, very effective at capturing their own insects. My name is Jerry from Suckle and Fly Traps. Okay, so what are sundews? Sundews are a unique type of carnivorous plant with sticky leaves. So these leaves are covered in stalks and those stalks are covered in mucilage which is, a, which is a type of glue. And if I put my toothpick here, hopefully you can see how sticky they are. Now to insects, this mucilage looks like nectar. And that's the reason why insects are attracted to these plants. And of course, once they land here, they then get stuck uh, with that mucilage. Now, there are many species of sundews, all with their unique shaped leaves, colours and forms. This one here in particular is Drosera spatulata because the leaves here look like spatulas. Now for this particular species, it helps to capture prey with the leaves folding upwards, as you can see right here. And eventually that will help to digest whatever it's caught. There was something here that I placed, another food item that I placed earlier, and you can see hopefully that that leaf is also curving upwards. There are other species which use this technique, but this one in particular uses this curved upward motion of those leaves. The really cool thing about manually feeding your plants is that you get a really good insight as to how the particular plant reacts to captured food items. As I said earlier, there are many species of sundews out there, each with their own unique form, colour and leaf shape, and that determines how they deal with captured food items. So get a more of an appreciation of the different species out there, let's have a look at my nursery. Okay, so here in front of me I've got various species of sundews. Now over here I've got Drosera spatulata, they were the same ones that I showed you earlier. I've placed some food items on these leaves. Some have curled over, some haven't. This one over here hasn't. Over here, here's another one. You see that food item there closest to us. This plant over here, you can see some of these leaves on the left folding over. So these food items were placed on these plants around about an hour ago. And that one out the back there, you can see there's a leaf folding over closest to us. So Drosera spatulata aren't the only species which bend their leaves over the food item. This is a Drosera venusta, which is a South African sundew. And you can see that leaf over here bending over as well. Drosera spatulata. Funny enough, this leaf over here hasn't curved over completely. It's just the stalks which have folded in on that food item. Over here I've got Drosera burmanoi, otherwise known as the tropical sundew. Just the stalks have folded over that prey item which is quite large. And there's another one over here which is starting to bend over that food item. Now, just to show you how quick, so Drosera burmanae are the quickest sundews to react. I'm just gonna demonstrate that by putting my 
toothpick here on these trigger tentacles and you'll see that they'll start to hopefully they'll start to move inwards see that so that's what I was saying earlier different species react differently and some are much faster than others and Drosera burmanii, otherwise known as the tropical sundew, is one of the fastest moving sundews. Over here I've got Drosera bigmiae. These are quite small. They're around about a centimetre and a half across. They've got food items placed on the end of those leaves. Those leaves are quite differently shaped. You can see just the end of those leaves are and where all the tentacles are and it's only that part of the leaf that folds over the food item they're relatively quick as well i saw a movement after around about say five minutes it's just some more food items over here being enveloped now over here i've got a Drosera capensis, otherwise known as the Cape Sundew. Now these are known for folding their leaves completely over the prey item. This one over here is completely bent over. Now the prey item, or the food item that I've placed here, was this one over here. So I think it determines, just depending on how large that prey item, prey item is, that will determine what that leaf does. But this was placed yeah, around about two hours ago now. So, Drosera capensis, known for its extreme leaf movement. And just going over here, this is a Drosera bonata tea form. That's the food item that I've placed here. Sorry about the breeze. But just the stalks have come over onto that food item again because it's a different species the leaves are shaped differently that determines how that food item is treated once it lands on that leaf so why would you consider feeding your sundews well sundews like all carnivorous plants are very very effective at capturing all sorts of insects. Now I have a carnivorous plants nursery here in my backyard and I grow all of my carnivorous plants outdoors all year round. Now the reason being is because I know that outdoors is where all the insects are and I know that's where my plants are going to be happy and healthy knowing that they're capturing all the insects that they need. Despite that though I've decided to hand feed some of my sundews. The reason is because I've noticed that with some of my sundews, in particular Drosera burmanii, the tropical sundews, they've gotten smaller as the growing season has progressed. It's the first day of autumn now, and compared to the size that they are now, they're around about a centimetre, compared to what they were back in spring, they're around about three centimetres. So I thought long and hard about why that may be happening because the growing conditions haven't changed and I suspect it's because the, the plants have spent a lot of energy producing those seeds. Sundews love to produce uh, a lot of seeds and they do that to sort of make the most of the good growing conditions and producing those seeds is sort of like an insurance policy uh, for later on down the track. So um, what I suspect is that if the energy spent producing those seeds is more than the energy derived from captured prey items, that eventually that plant is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. To so to reverse that, I've hand fed some of those sundews and to my surprise, it's made a big difference the growth rate has increased and also the size of the plants and not only that if i cut off the flower stalks as soon as they develop then 
in, in addition to hand feeding the plants, then that makes a very, very big difference, producing very nice, large specimens. So here's a photo of a plant that I've cut the flower stalks off and that I've been hand feeding. That's the one on the left, it's around about three centimeters in diameter. And on the right is a, another plant. This plant I've just allowed to produce seeds and I haven't hand fed at all. And that's only about a centimeter in diameter. They're both tropical sundews. They've both been growing in my nursery under the same growing conditions. And as you can see, it does make a difference. As well as um, if you're going to be growing these plants indoors and being subtropical plants, these uh, sundews will grow very nicely indoors. If you're growing them under a, uh, on a sunny windowsill, north facing for example, if you're not seeing any captured prey items, then it's a good idea to hand feed. And of course, the same goes with greenhouses as well. Of course, if you're growing them under LED lights, then you're definitely going to have to hand feed them because being enclosed in a small area, you're not going to see any insects about, so consider hand feeding them as well. So the food items that I use to feed my plants are bloodworms. So I store the bloodworms in a disposable container, which I leave in the freezer. Now these bloodworms, from what I've been told, can be frozen for up to three months. And whenever I need to feed me plants, I just take this tray out. It's got all the portions in there. Then I just use a pair of scissors to cut off the portions that I need. They just come out like this. So once I get the portion that I need, I simply just peel off the cover and then just plonk it into a container. Here I'm using a film canister container. I then just put on the lid. I then dip the bloodworms into a container with warm water. That's going to help to thaw out those bloodworms. So after about five minutes, the blood worm should be thawed out like this. That separates the worms, so that allows you then to select individual worms, which you can then feed your plants with. So to actually feed the plants, all you've got to do is just use a toothpick or similar to pick up the worms. It's just a matter of placing it or blood worms onto the center of the leaf. Just pat it down gently like this. By having it in the center of the leaf, that's going to really help for that plant to completely digest those blood worms. And what's also important is that whatever you place on those leaves is not too large. You don't want it sort of to, to be overhanging those leaves. Um, the reason being is if anything that's undigested can sort of promote fungal or mould growth. So to completely avoid that, just place a food item which fits nicely in the centre of the leaf like so. So once you've finished feeding your plants, it's just a matter of putting the cap back on your container and you can place those bloodworms into the fridge. I keep my bloodworms in there for about three, up to three to four days. After that time, they will start to go off and start to smell a bit. So uh, you can continue feeding your plants within that time period. So hopefully now you have a better idea about how to feed your sundews. So unlike Venus flytraps where you have to deal with trigger hairs and you have to uh, ensure that the prey item is alive or it's moving within the leaf, with sundews you don't, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a matter of placing a fresh food item onto the leaf and the plant will do the rest. It doesn't have to be alive whatever you place on there. 
Now, with the feeding frequencies that I specified in the video, I mentioned that uh, you can feed two leaves in one feeding session with these smaller rosette forming sundews like Drosera spatulata and tropical sundews, Drosera bermini. And then after about 10 days, you can then repeat the feeding cycle. After that 10 days, you're given the plant enough opportunity to really digest whatever you placed on there. And um, yeah, you just, just restarted after those 10 days. For the larger plants like Drosera banata and Drosera capensis, because they're larger uh, plants, you can probably start off with four leaves uh, feeding session in one feeding session. Again, after 10 days, repeat the uh, feeding. There's no hard and fast rule here. It's just something that I have um, experimented with and my plants have gotten really well, really big, and they've gotten really well out of those feeding sessions. Of course, it's always open to experimentation. You can always feed them more, whatever you like. And uh, it's just better to start off uh, smaller amounts and then working your way up slowly rather than the other way around, okay? And of course, you don't have to feed them um, bloodworms. A lot of the times I've been in my backyard and I've found aphids or any, anything else out there. And then I've just picked up those um, aphids by sprinkling on a white bit of paper. And again, using a toothpick, just placing them on the leaves and they make a really nice juicy meal for those sundews. All right, everyone, until next time, happy growing and happy feeding.